uh, a BJT uh, is a, another device which will be of interest to us. And as I already said to you, uh, we started with BJT first. The 48 invention was a bipolar transistor. Uh, however, as I said, that MOSFETs have taken over. So we first did MOSFET. Now go back, go back and say what is the BJT. Please remember BJT is still not out. There are devices or kinds of devices or bipolar devices which are still being used. One of the major devices which people are using right now is Arister, which is essentially a bipolar device. So Arister, so we have done one junction device which will be called diode. Now we this time start with having a device which has two junctions. We say it as a BG. And if there are three junctions, then it will be called thyristor. So, uh, PNPN device is called thyristor. PNP or NPN is called transistor. So, let's look for the, and of course, PN junction is known, so it's the diode. So, we start with the DJT, and I have given some points which may be of interest. If they are more of a statement, I think I'll leave my sheets. There is nothing much to explain. Uh, since it is a bipolar transport, poles and electrons both contribute to us. This is the most important part. In the case of MOSFET, which carriers were dominating? Either the electrons in case of N channel or holes in case of E channel device. So they were called majority carrier transport. Drift. Drift is called majority carrier transport. Here we will see later that both holes and electrons actually contribute to current and surprisingly it is the minority carrier transport which dominates. This is the other issue which is important. The third of course is, uh, these are called current driven devices. In contrast, the MOSFET which is, MOSFET is a voltage driven device. That is another issue which is important for BJT. The fourth important point, uh, because say current driven or whatever reason, uh, input resistance of a BJT in whichever configuration I use is normally less much less than input resistance of MOSFET. Another feature of this, uh, it has both possibility like NMOS or PMOS. So we have a PNP device and an NPN device. Both devices are possible. We have a junction which is PN, NP or NPPN. So both possibilities exist. Uh, all of them are three terminal devices. In contrast to MOSFET which are four terminal devices. Uh, another important thing is BJT can be good amplifying device. The 
which is in contrast to MOSFET, which is not as good a amplifier as PJTs. PJT is a very good amplifier. Uh, you can also make PJT can act as switch for logic element. And if you see our earlier logic families which use BJTs, maybe I don't know how many of you have read somewhere or at least should know DTL, RTL, DCTL, ECL and CTL. Maybe one more I square L and All these families of logic chips are essentially using bipolar transistors. If you want full forms, diode transistor logic, resistor transistor logic, direct coupled transistor logic, emitter coupled logic, integrated injection logic and trans transistor transistor logic, TTL. TTL remained the major logic element till 1975 or it. Beyond that MOSFETs almost took over. So the 99% of the chips market till 1978 or something were TTL chips. Uh, as I say now, they are not so much used. Uh, however, as I say, there are some some family like this may be still useful sometimes. This is still is used. Its name is now different. Common mode logic. Okay. ECL logic has been renamed as CML which can be used either in MOSFET or in uh, bipolar so it was given a common name common mode logic anyway so these are the features nine two more uh, I think with this it should have gone eight there but doesn't matter uh, normally BJT amplifiers show larger bandwidth now this word I think I did not explain in the case of the uh, market maybe when this will come we will show you what is it larger bandwidth. Just to give explanation on this uh, if you see gain for excess normally in dvs 10 log with p2 by p1 or 20 log and plotted against frequency. Why this frequency term is appearing? Because there are capacitances, so RC time constants are involved. RC time constants is a frequency dependent. T is 1 upon RC, RC is T, 1 upon T is frequency. So it is found most amplifiers, not so much, has a DC gain of A0 and then the gains as the frequency increases, gains start falling and uh, roughly one can say 3 dB point, 3 dB down, whatever frequency the gain falls by 3 dB is called its bandwidth or omega 0, 3 dB gain, gain falls first time 3 dB down that is called its bandwidth. What is the word bandwidth therefore is that beyond this gain will keep reducing, so the maximum gain is available here up to which only you should operate if you are looking for this gain. One more interesting feature which maybe I will show you later, wherever it intersects this point, this is 0 dB means unity gain, 0 dB means unity gain. This point is called gain bandwidth product, this point is called gain bandwidth product means at least the maximum frequency at which up to which gain is available is called gain unity gain that is the maximum frequency gain bandwidth is constant gain is unity so that is the maximum frequency you can operate beyond which the gain will become minus minus means minus dB means fractions. Okay. This gain bandwidth is the feature of a any amplifier in new design. Now in this case it has been found that if you do an amplifier using bipolar or a MOSFET this value is normally larger in case of BJTs than in case of 
MOS. So what is the advantage? That if I am amplifying a signal at 100 megahertz or 500 megahertz, I should prefer a BJT amplifier or gigahertz per second. But if I am amplifying at kilohertz to megahertz, 10 sub megahertz to 50 megahertz, I may as well use a MOS. Is that clear? Otherwise, higher the frequency you are looking for gains, you will require probably a BJT amplifier to do the job. At gigahertz, there are very few MOSFET which amplify. Uh, okay, when I come to bandwidth uh, for the BJT, I will that time also show you a MOSFET equivalent circuit and uh, then you will find what I am saying. If you take this as a gospel for a while. Okay, that Bandwidth of a BJT amplifier is normally and that the word is normally you can do tricks on either side to make one worse than the other. You know I do something good here and then say oh I, that's bad. So that tricks you can always play but in general for similar things BJTs will show larger bandwidth. But associated part which is how it is happening to some extent power dissipation is higher. is higher in BJT than device with MOSFET. Typically BJT is operate in milliamps, 2 milliamps to tens of to hundreds of milliamps and in some cases amps. Whereas MOSFET normally operate at 1 microamp to say maybe 100 microamp at best a milliamp. Not that I cannot run 10 milliamp current or 100 milliamp current in MOSFET, but the size will become huge for that. And that is not we are looking for density wise, so we will not run larger device. So in case of the similar size transistor if you make, BJTs will dissipate larger power simply because they drive larger currents. Where even voltages are higher than normal MOSFET voltage. So they are power consumers, oh sorry this is 10, they consume hell of a power, okay. I think uh, apart from MOSFET which was very specific circuit related device, as I just now said variety of BJT devices are available. Not just the transistor. Not BJT, I should say bipolar devices in general. The names as I say thyristor, photodiodes or phototransistor, avalanche transistors, noise generators, Lasers to some extent are also amplifiers using some partial bipolar activity. These all devices are made using bipolar devices, is that correct? Uh, MOSFET does not have that many, of course there is a MOSFET also in power device. There are other names I can give you, gate control thyristors, PTOs, MCTs, name number of them. So BJT devices are larger in number but not so much popular for amplifiers now okay. or logic per se they are almost lost the race. Is that correct? Logic they are almost lost the race. Everywhere all ICs using digital hardware will use mostly MOSFET and which kind of circuit they will have N channel, T channel together and what we call that as PMOS. So 99% of the chips using circuits for digital circuit will have CMOS as their basic element in all their analysis and design. So you can see BJT is still as an looks to be a very interesting device. We started with it and then we should have gone, we left after many years we figured out better device. But there was a time between 80 and 86 or 85. When everyone was thinking whether to shift to BJT, allude to continue to BJT or shift to a MOSFET, there was a fight going on. So both were on the same levels. By 84, 85, I think MOSFET just did that. Till 5-6 years, they were 
talking to each other. The game we played then was because MOSFET had already appeared and there were bipolar devices. So MOSFETs were told to be compatible to BJP. Now this was a very interesting thing. When the MOSFET came, they say I want to replace a BJP device by your MOSFET. Okay. So they should be compatible. So they are uh, the terminal, the way they were organized and the voltages they need to have were to be similar as this. Okay. So they were called HTTLs. H is, there is no TTL in that thing, but it was called high grade TTL, which is actually ST MOSFET. Okay. The idea was that you just replace your BGT with your MOSFET and it should work. Okay. And that was the time which as I say four or five years when this went on and finally MOSFET just became. But these devices are still as many as bipolar devices. So don't think that bipolar market, IC market is almost true, nothing there. But for this, there is a variety of this normal BJT also has appeared, which is called HBT or in other name it is called HEMT. It's called heterojunction bipolar transistors or high electron mobility transistors. Just to give an idea, you can get two lakh fifty thousand centimeter square volt second mobilities are possible in HBTs. They are not silicon devices, they are three five compound semiconductor devices, but they are bipolar. They are bipolar. So don't think that, as I keep saying, you never think that one area is all true because you know we have become so much digital circuit oriented, we feel the world is all over for bipolar. So there are other section of circuit devices which still are used and required to be used. Is that correct? So where do you think HBTs will be required with such a large mobility? High speed circuits in space or in defense. Uh, just to give another idea, many of you may not be aware of this world, world or maybe you are aware, if there is everything you are aware than us, more than us, it's called countermeasures. So let's say I have a missile and you are flying in an aircraft, okay. so I am trying to hit the aircraft, but aircraft has a control computer system which is tracking this missile. So it knows that at what angle is being fired and what time it will reach and hit it. So it changes its path before the missile could change. But missile itself has a control. Which it knows what is this aircraft is trying to do. Okay. So it changes the course after some time as if it didn't know it. And then suddenly changes its course. But that aircraft is also looking at it that it may do this. So he has already, these are called countermeasures, counter countermeasures, counter counter countermeasures. To do this, the system has to be extremely fast. So I should do faster than you, okay. Whatever tracking I am doing, I should have four points in this, okay, he is going to hit me like this. So I will change my path. I will lose the height or go up or shift left, right or may a somersault. Okay. All these are possible if your systems are extremely fast. But these are very few requirements, particularly defense, and you know such systems will be damn costly. But who cares? After all, million dollars for in India, uh, defense is nothing great about. Ek mid gir jata hai, kisko pata mein lagta hai na? Do aadmi mar gaya, itna hi humko pata hai. Or mikki kima kitni hai pata hai. So that's how. Okay. So please remember that I keep saying all these days as if digital world is digital. Yes, for us most of the consumer electronics, consumer bases, all are digital. So we keep forgetting that there is an analog part which is as much dominant other areas. Okay, so BJTs or bipolar devices are still stronger. Is that here in some areas where MOSFET did not actually hit them? So this is a some kind of introduction. Why bipolar? Now, ask all the people who ask why, so I will give the first answer to why. Okay. So now start with BJT. Having told you what exactly we are really looking for. 
Okay. A BJT, as we see in the circuit element, there are two kinds of devices we see base, collector, emitter. An arrow coming out is an NPN structure. That means this is N, this is P, this is N. And if arrow is N, then it is P and P collector base. These are symbols. These are symbols for NPN and PNP transistors. So basic idea, uh, you can see from here if I show you equivalent of a MOSFET in channel or P channel, whichever way I show you, except for this base terminal, separate terminal, these are similar. And if many cases I may do this in MOSFET, the bulk may be connected to source permanently. So that third port terminal is not required, it almost mimics like the normal three terminal device. However, there is no DC current because of the insulator here, whereas here the current is entering right in the area. And since there is a voltage by current equation, if you see normally, if the current flows, resistance goes down. If there is no current, resistance is higher. So input resistance of this will be depending on what current it flows. Input current is practically zero, DK is very small current. So the input resistance is extremely high. Is that clear? That's why high impedance circuits are possible with input impedance, not so much with this. Okay, the other thing we should look into, how do they look into cross sections? Let us say I want to make a PNP transistor. So I start with a P substrate, okay, which is going to be my collector. Is that correct? Which is going to be my collector. By masking, I can actually make maybe slightly deeper for the sake of good looking thing, though it is not that deep as I am showing you now. I made an N region inside this P, region, P area by masking. We have already shown you what, how to mask. That means I should mask the rest of this by oxide using first mask, keep this area open and impurities can be introduced here and die. Once I make this, then I do another masking and create a P plus region here. And when I was doing this, I can either make this P plus simultaneously and this, I can open this area also. Sometimes this is done, sometimes it is not required. I will show you why it is not required. I also will require an contact, another mask I will require to make. What is this N plus N means? I have already told you, if I have a metal and a semiconductor, how this characteristic will be like this? What should be this one? Highly doped. I showed you that if it is N plus or P plus, then the contact is ohmic. Okay. So for making an ohmic contact, this N is required. N is very li lightly doped region, so you require N plus to make a ohmic contact. This part which is already P plus, you don't need additional P plus, P plus. This P is also made P plus, okay. What is the advantage of this contact? This contact represents this area. Is that correct? Alternatively, I could have taken a contact here. Is that clear? Alternatively, I could have taken a contact here. But then, you can see if I have this one transistor, you can see is emitter meter, this is my base and this is my collector, okay. If I want to connect this transistor to the other circuit, this collector wire, I have to bring it up to the base. So wafer is like this, upar se hole kaise karen. So I want all contacts on the surface, these are called planar devices. Planar means on a single plane, every contact is picked up. 
So this collector contact is picked up here which is to this substrate. So you have emitter base and uh, this base to emitter region is called base width which is the most important parameter in transistor base width. If I am which is this device I made this is a PNP transistor sometimes this P is not used by me can you think why I can make directly contact to P and I am sure I will get a good ohmic contact. यानी कहीं ना कहीं से यहाँ automatic P plus बनना चाहिए ऐसा क्या हो सकता है without actually making a P okay aluminium wires are normally or aluminium contacts are picked up aluminium is a type three dopant for silicon aluminium is a type three dopant so if I make a ohmic contact of aluminium here part of the aluminium will go down okay also it has a large solid solubility in silicon so partly it will actually go in make alloy there then form n plus there a huge good ohmic contact even without this but in silicon n type aluminium has a barrier potential opposite now okay now that will become a short key barrier so to make a good contact I need an n plus there so that I can make aluminium good ohmic contact with n. So if I do a NPN transistor which is my N which is this is my P so during this N plus itself I will open a window here make a collector emitter and I did no, no separate diffusion here so it is emitter base collector contacts. This is NPN transistor this is PNP transistor, this is NPN transistor. Normally NPN transistors are preferred over PNP. Why? Uddham bolna mas ko thoda sucho ho me kyo hai, me to me me bhi bade sakta tha na, kuch to us mein. What kind of transport is in the case of uh, by BJTs? Minority. So mobility ki dara hai? Drift nahi hai na? Thoda sahi hai but thoda galat hai. Unko diffusion coefficient is higher for electrons than for holes. Okay. So that is related but it is not that problem. We are actually for diffusion term. Is that correct? The diffusion term dominates for electrons compared to holes. Uh, Therefore, in minority transport, it is the D which matters and not drift, which is only mobility dependent. So this has to be understood in thinking. Okay. So, all said and done, these are, and if I plot the characteristics, I yes, sir. I see two characteristics. First, let me see IC VC characteristics. Why VC? Because if you see, if this is going to be my common emitter circuit for N or P, this is going to be my input part, and this is going to be my output part. So this is VCE. You can see from here to here the voltage is VCE. Okay. And this is the current which I am going to see. So ICVC is called output characteristics like IDS, VDS characteristics there, the ICVC characteristics. And it has been found, maybe for us or something. As the base current increases, the collector current increases and shows you. Uh, you may actually show a little bit saturation to some extent if I extend further. But if you see interesting part compared to MOSFET, so is in the MOSFET, some effect we will discuss soon. If I extrapolate, if I should get the correct slope, but if I extrapolate all of them. 
all of them will meet at one point. Okay, this voltage is called Arnie voltage. James Arnie was one of the thoughtless partner in making transistor theory, but somehow he calculated all the credit. The early model was the first model which actually appeared, but credit went to Shockley. He was his boss. As a subject of that. So, is that clear? The characteristics is ICBC characteristics. If you do little carefully, you can see as if in some regions where VC is smaller, what is the relationship between ICBC? Almost linear, and beyond that, it starts saturating with a slope, but saturating. The word which I say is now change it. We'll come back to it later. The portion in which VC is small and ICVC shows relatively linear characteristics is called saturation region. The current when it becomes for I V equal to zero, current becomes very small, and this portion, this area. Is called cutoff region. I C is close to zero. It will not be zero. It will be some reverse current flow, but practically zero. This is saturation, and this area is called active mode or active region. As in the case of MOSFET, I said analog circuit where they operate in MOSFET always in saturation mode, which means there same mode here itself. Even in bipolar, we operate device for analog in active mode. Is that correct? All analog circuits, the bipolar transistor must operate in active mode. Now we can see from here. Uh, maybe if little more high other characteristics, larger the I V I keep, larger this will flow. Even higher I can show you. So it is coming closer towards I C value. So if I actually do my some input I V varies from say zero to a large value say one milliamp, take of it one is too high. I Shift the volt, uh, base current from zero to one milliamp. Then zero means maybe at that time the transistor will have all the drop VDD here or VCC, and it will actually show for that resistance the maximum current IC max, which is VCC by R or on as it's called. So when you reach the maximum current, the transistor is operating in full current mode. Okay, when you are IB zero. You are in output voltage is highest when I B is zero, and it is lowest when I I B is very high. Which two states I got? Zero and one. The transistor is switched off and on, going from I C max to I C zero. Is that correct? And since that max is fixed, we say we are in saturation. Max, no more current possible. Is that clear? We'll see the circuit wise why so. But that is why that region was defined as saturation. That means no extra current can be taken. That's the maximum possible. VCC by R, as we say, that's the maximum possible. So if you reach there, close to that, you say you are in saturation. So this bipolar circuit in digital mode should move from here to here, but will pass through active mode anyway. Is that correct? When it switches, though you may say I have a pulse. But actually, it is going through number of such values. So device initial is off, then becomes goes into active mode, and finally reaches saturation. Is that correct? Swings like this. Is that correct? So this is how a circuit person looks into device. He is interested in switching, so he can see this. 
if I keep my device bias somewhere here, some value for a some DC value here, you can see if I put a AC signal on this corresponding to say, this value whichever this variation show here, here I may get outputs which are bigger than this value, IC is larger which means I have amplified my input signal, is that correct? I have amplified my input signal. So basic idea in amplifier is you must operate always in active mode, no such, don't confuse, in active mode, okay, or also called normal mode of operation. Okay. One is cut off, other is saturation and the third one either called active mode or called saturated, uh, sorry, the normal mode of operation. Is ke karan, Gautam ke karan, mere Yes. Usko bolte hai load line. I mean, circuit batayin. Unko tbhi, dekh, dikha ya ki kaise amplify. Uh, ek particular IB par intersect ho raha hai. किसी एक फिक्स्ड आईबी पर बायस हमेशा बेस करंट को कर रहे हैं तो एक फिक्स्ड आईबी को बायस कर दिया यदि उसके ऊपर यदि आपने सिग्नल लगाया तो आईसी बढ़ के आएगा आपके प्रोपोर्शन बिकॉज़ ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक शो ए चेंज इन आईसी इज लार्जर देन चेंज इन आईबी आईबी का जो चेंज है वो छोटा है आईसी का चेंज बड़ा है इसलिए वी से इट इज एम्पलीफाइड Small change in IB will reflect large change in IC. So it's an Is that clear? So we'll see that we must operate our device, and this point where we bias is called the Q point. Is called the Q point. Okay. So this is something related to circuit. This is related to technology. That is the characteristics I'm looking for. Now I want to know, I just now said IC has something to do with IB or IC has something to do with other currents, how are they related? Only currents will be related, why we said, which is this device? Current driven, so now instead of VGS, we will now talk of currents only. So let us look into, so having shown you the relationship with the technology to device to circuit. Let us do device now little more carefully. Ye main jada dikha raha hon. This is P plus, this is P and this is N. It is a PNP transistor, why I chose PNP, all books are showing you PNP, so if you go back and read at least you can immediately see. Whatever is shown here is true also for NPN with holes replaced by electrons, voltage is replaced by opposite sides. Okay. Whatever is true for PNP, opposite will be true for bias as well as the direction of current, everything will be opposite, does not matter. Now this region, the first region which is heavily doped, is called emitter. This top, the center portion which is n kind is called base and the last part P region. Typical doping for you I may say it, it is larger than 10 to power 19 per cc. Base has a doping of ND of maybe I shall write here. ND is typically 5 into 10 to power 16. 10 to power, maybe 10 to power 16 to 10 to power 17 per cc. And this is normally 5 into 10 to power 15 to 10 to power 16 per cc. So, which is the most heavier dope region? Emitter. Okay. That's why it is not collector. Emitter. Though both are P, so which is to be called emitter is your choice. But in reality, emitter is different from collector because it is very heavily doped region. This is called the width or thickness of emitter region. This is called base region. 
this is called connector. Normally, I mean I showed you little not properly by dimensions, this is moderate small value but not very big. This is extremely small. Base width is very very small compared to all dimensions. Okay. Base width is smallest among them. And this is normally larger compared to other two because at the end the voltage will be sustained by this reason. How much is the voltage it can stand to externally will be decided here. How much collector region I have. Okay. I show you later why I said so. Is this doping clear? And same number of can be NPN, emitter will be same 10 to the power 19 plus, P will be typically in that case is 10 to the power 16 kind of this and here it will be typically less than 16. Now if I bias it 0, let us say I bias all of them 0, so I bias me. So, I think can I rub up these values because then I will be able to show you better figures. Okay, let us draw some lines. These are called, this is PN junction, which is this emitter base junction. This is called emitter base junction. This is called base collector junction. So there are two junctions, is that clear? Ba emitter base junction, base collector. Right now all three terminals have been grounded. If you want to see the doping, maybe you can show you something like this. This will be your ini. Maybe this will be your ND this will be your another any maybe collector, emitter, base, doping come hai, is that correct? Yeah, heavily doped hai. or in between base and the higher hai, this is higher hai, this is chota. Since this is heavier doped as I keep saying, this is what kind of junction we are making, a good step junction I can make. Comparatively, this is not as great a step junction, but still it is 10 to the power 16, 17, 215. So, at least an order difference I am keeping. So, this is also a step junction, but this is really great step junction I have created. So, if I really show you, let us say, depletion layers, which side will be the larger depletion layer? Here it will be very thin, relatively. Relatively, that will itself be smaller at zero bias, but little larger on n side. Similarly, compared to here, this will be your n, and this will be on the p side. Is that okay? The lighter dope side will have larger depletion. Is that clear? Why it is so? Because the charge here must be balanced by charge there. Q n a x d must be equal to Q n d x d. Is that correct? So x d has to match ratio of n a and n d. So doping lower, depletion larger. Is that correct? So if I really see the field profile for the sake of this, you can see from here, if I draw this, sorry. You can see this will be your field here and this will be your field here. Okay, this will be even lower because of the dopings you have. Uh, height may not be this, but this width will be much larger in the case of. The reason why I am saying you this will be soon clear what I am trying to say. If you see a band diagram, what do we do? Let's draw maybe a field wala hata deta on yahi mein band diagram dikha deta. This is P type. Uska P plus plus hai ya P plus hai. Where will be its Fermi level? Closer to where? 
valence band as come closer to valence band that means higher doping for you. So let us put this is my conduction band this is my valence band right now I will just show you and the Fermi level is close to valence band this is EC of a meter this is CV of a meter this is Fermi level in a meter. However, if I join this N with this what it will do? Fermi level must get aligned okay. So if you say for all three if I join the Fermi level must get aligned but this is N time where its Fermi level should be near to the conduction band. So this means that this band will not pass to this band. Because Fermi level has to be closer to the conduction band by similar logic this will be my valence band. But this is again P type lighter dome but P type so this Fermi level must come again closer to uh, valence band must come closer to the Fermi level. Ye thoda dur rakha hai kyaunki ye heavier doped hai ye thoda lightly doped hai aur iske liye bhi whatever because band gap has to be similar. Raj is it okay? So this is how you should be now a sorry ye jara dur ho gaya itna dur mat kare. So you must be able to draw band diagrams whenever the dopings are provided at 0 bias first. Why you want to show you 0 bias first? Because then when I apply bias, I know Fermi level will shift from its one value and as I shift, they will split and the difference is voltage. Is that correct? So the first band diagram you should be able to draw for any kind of device is by looking at 0 bias, how they look. Since there is no bias anywhere, all terminals are grounded. What is the current flowing? Zero. No transport. All biases are zero. Okay. However, we are we wish to now bias this device. We wish to bias this device. And the way I wish to bias uh, is the following. I this is PNP device. Maybe I can slightly change the figure. I say I bias P here positive and N here negative. So what is this base emitter junction is? Forward bias. Base emitter junction is forward bias. P getting positive, N getting negative. However, the base collector junction I want to reverse bias. So this is my VBC, this is my VBC. Is that okay? So base emitter junction now is forward bias and base collector junction is now reverse bias. Is that clear to you? So for if you look at this device, this will further shrink in forward bias, this will further shrink and what will happen to this? Please tell me if any ND we can remove right now. If I reverse bias this junction base collector junction, what will happen to its depletion layers? This is reverse bias. So it will enhance partly on this side but much more on this side. Whereas here it will be opposite. Okay. If I have this junction which I am showing you here, this will be further reduced here and further reduced it will go opposite, na? it will reduce the barrier potential. So the depletion layer will shrink in the forward bias 
and in the case of reverse bias it will enhance. Band diagram mein kya karein? Thoda sa phir se upar kar dete hain. Ye to pehle waise likha dete hain aapko. Ye EC hai, ye EV hai aur ye iska EF hai. Now earlier they were aligned, PN junction the Fermi level is around 0 pi but now I give a forward bias. So where will be the Fermi level of n type will be with reference to p type above or niche. So now junction is not so much, then think about it. I want to, if I bias forward bias what happens in normal junction more electrons and more holes can come. तो बैरियर पोटेंशियल क्या होना चाहिए छोटा होना चाहिए अभी जैसे पहले दिखाया था तो फर्मी लेवल जैसे यहां जा रहा है तो फर्मी लेवल उसका यहां ओके और ये जो वैल्यू है इसको तो अभी करते हैं ये जो वैल्यू है क्या होगा क्यू वी बी इफ यू आर लुकिंग एनर्जी इज दैट करेक्ट तो दिस इज द फर्मी लेवल इन एन what will happen to the other side? Depletion layer is not much bigger. Electric field is not much bigger. So barrier is much higher. So now I will take it first. And now, the Fermi level is OK. And what will happen? EBC, this is EF collector, this is EC collector, this is EV collector. और भी ज़्यादा दिखा सकते हैं पर मैंने height इतनी दिखा जितना BBC होगा उतना ये band ऊपर जाएगा। तो क्या यहाँ से क्या नहीं होगा? What it will not occur? The diffusion turn will be further stalled because more barrier is created and which current it can then allow the majority carriers, the electrons from here can go here and holes from here can come here. But if you look at this junction, something else is happening. Now, since this is a lower barrier potential, more and more holes can now diffuse in the N region. Is that correct? Electrons from N region will diffuse into P region. Barrier come kya na apne pehle se. To abhi electrons jo hai, ya aise ja sakte hai, holes to jada hai, to ye aur jada. More holes can come, jitne electrons hidar se mil sakte hai, doping hai, wo udhar ja sakte hai. Whereas if I want these carriers, now this is the game differently we are now playing. This width of the base which is with this, let us say for the sake of it, the minor holes become minority in base, for a PNP holes become minority in base, okay. holes you are injecting from P side into N, N has a doping of 10 to power 17 holes maybe 15, 15 fine, so still minority. So we say they will diffuse and become minor because equilibrium the line has to. So steady state को अटेंड करने का इट विल ट्राइ यू हैव फिक्स द बायस सो होल्स दिस करंट विल गेट एडजस्टेड सो दैट यू हैव ए करंट अक्रॉस द बेस एमिशन जंक इज दैट करंट अब दिस मींस देर इज सम लाइफ टाइम ऑफ होल्स एसोसिएटेड इन द बेस इज दैट क्लियर क्योंकि अदरवाइज रिकॉम्बिनेशन नहीं होगा इफ देर इज ए लाइफ टाइम एसोसिएटेड देन वी से एल्स ऑफ पी ओके और अदर यू मे इवन ओके in N region is D tau P so the way we organize this is a dope uh, this tau is a parameter which during fabrication I fix it that's the process I can fix my tau by a process so it's not easy but can be done and I see to it in all my analysis so far shown here, this is valid. 
अर्लियर पी एन जंक्शन में क्या बोला कि इन्फिनेट तक गया हो दैट इज लेंथ ऑफ एन वॉज लॉन्ग इनफ दे कैन गो टू इक्विब्रियम कॉन्सेंट्रेट इज दैट पॉइंट क्लियर नॉर्मल पी एन जंक्शन में क्या बोला एन इज लॉन्ग इनफ सो द so the holes will decay down to its pno value before it reaches the end contact is that clear that is what we said in a pn junction but now the base width is very very small so their concentration will not go to equilibrium but will be much as if you are try i am trying to say you this if this is my pn junction like this then the holes whatever i say they by depend on d tau they may become to pno and this is my p is of pn at zero they decay down is that correct but ye itna hi base width hai to so their concentration has not reached its equilibrium value not mean call equilibrium value thermal equilibrium now this means in my solving equation we see the boundary condition which i applied there we say length at infinity is pno i cannot now use that okay i'll add that w how much okay that is the first thing we'll do when i solve this diffusion problem is that clear but what that means that the holes which are here they will take since the base width is very small they are transiting in the base region by diffusion okay most of them because if this is very small most of them may actually reach base collector junction some may recombine few of them may recombine okay some some but most of them will reach to the base collector. but at base collector junction these are peaks okay what did i say for holes from n side can e become some majority carrier going towards p side which is reverse bias current but now the reverse bias current should be thought something like this of a diode normally is something like this now it is as if larger the carrier appear this current will increase and that means whatever is injected here will be swept by electric field because electric field is higher now why it is higher reverse bias lagaya hai electric field to strong kar diya maine since the electric field is stronger whatever hits the junction there everyone is swept across the barrier into the collector region and collected therefore called collector and collect since the holes are emitted from this side that p plus region is called emitter and the majority what is going to happen is the base where some carriers may become mine okay is that clear to you not all because depending on the lifetime some will become mine okay so whatever has been injected may not reach all of it here but most of it reach here what is that condition why i say most of it the reason i am now saying most of it is this let's say this is the distance and they are traveling with certain average velocity so the time taken is called transit time what is it called transit time that is very small because base is very small so most of them will transit across the base but the other issue which is of relevant to me which i suddenly realized yaar ye to n type region hai aapne to holes usme dal diye kya ho gaya change ho gaya kya nahi maha maintain kar paye hum log neutrality but n region to neutral tha okay aapne to pump kar diya to ye jo electrons जो रिकम्बाइन करने की बात किया द बेस देन लुक्स इन टू इट होमिनी आर लेफ्ट विच एवर स्मॉल नंबर द बेस एक्चुअली पुशेस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द बेस इज दैट करेक्ट आई रिपीट हंड्रेड होल स्टार्टेड 
95-98 reached the base collector junction cut. But these two holes were there. This ke liye two electrons base se under aage. Base contact se and a battery se under aage. So that they can get cancelled and neutrality is held. Is that correct? So now do you know why base current flew? Because these two electrons have to be pushed in to maintain charge neutrality. There, out of 100 started, which we call say emitter current, 98 has reached collector. Two have to be given from the base to maintain the neutrality. Is that correct? So 98 reached collector, two I have submitted from the base. So what is the ratio of 100, 98 by 2? 49. So if there is a by circuit, if I can change this 2 or 3 or 4 here, proportionately I can change the collector value correspondingly. That's called amplification. Is that clear? Two electrons he base or 98 pick up earlier. Okay. This is base control. Base current is trying to control this. Is that clear? So is that charge neutrality condition is clear why base current flow this is an issue which is most important. Now this issue we, before we solve further the typical time lifetime of holes assume right electron and holes have same lifetime typically this will be order of say 10 nanoseconds base width by velocity to do it is roughly of that order maybe maybe 100 nanosecond or 0.1 microsecond kuch bhi le lo abhi some number lete hain jabki ye hoga 10 microsecond now this is an interesting feature ek electron hole ko recombine hone ke liye 10 microsecond lagenge जबकि ट्रांजिट के लिए 0.1 माइक्रोसेकंड ही लगेंगे तो रिकम्बाइन हुए क्यों सभी क्यों नहीं गए ओके राज हैज सेड गौतम हैज सेड सम ऑफ यू हैज सेड फाइन या इट्स एन एवरेज लाइफ टाइम सो नॉट ऑल कैरियर्स आर टेन बट आई गिव अ केस ऑल हैव सेम लाइफ टाइम देन देन आर यू नाउ गोइंग टू से दैट दे विल नॉट रिकम्बाइन ओके सो आप स्टेटमेंट का किताब पढ़ो एक नीचे उसमें फुटनोट है वो बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग फुटनोट है और इसीलिए मैं फिर से आपको वो बता रहा हूँ द फुटनोट सेज एंड विच इज द एग्जांपल विच आई हैव बीन गिविंग लास्ट थर्टी इयर्स आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ ओलंपिक स्पोर्ट्स बिकॉज आजकल क्रिकेट के सिवा कोई स्पोर्ट्स नहीं बट समझो यदि कॉमनवेल्थ में कभी गलती से आपने देखा हो तो आपने को काफी मेडल जो है वो शूटिंग में मिलते और जो अनफॉर्चुनेटली इज अ गेम विच मेनी पीपल डोंट वांट टू रिलिश आई डोंट नो व्हाई बट दैट्स इट उसमें एक गेम है इसका नाम है क्लैप ट्रैप शूटिंग इट्स ए 30 मीटर हिट करते हैं गन से एंड देयर इज अ स्क्रीन अर्लियर दे इज टू एक्चुअली शो पिजंस प्रो पिजंस मतलब राजा महाराजा के समय में ये एक्चुअल पिजंस फेंके जाते थे और राजा लोग ठाक 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 करते और वो काउंट करते थे कि कितने हमने मारे। तो the rate with which these are let's say three pigeons are thrown at a time, every second they throw करते हैं। but shooter जो है उसको तीन के second के बाद ही वो दूसरी गोली मारते हैं। He is a hundred percent shooter. So when the three appears, he can kill only one hundred percent. He will kill average. सबको one ही है। but दो तो निकल गए। Is that clear? Is that word clear? So, कहने का मतलब यह है कि whatever holes leave the emitter base junction, they reach to the collector base junction, and you say some of them recombine. Though the time taken was very, the reason why I said so, I never said those electrons which emitted at some point are the ones I am going to kill. At time of my lifetime. Whichever appears before me, I will kill it. Is that clear to you? Is that point clear? That's why I give that clap trap example. What at tau p, I will see and hit two. Okay. 
by then I, how many have gone i don't know i i am clear because i am 100% tutor i will recombine okay so two will still recombine even if their lifetime is 1000 times larger is that clear and that essentially maintains the charge and therefore collector current is huge enough compared to base current but it is always less than emitter current because some have recombined how many will recombine part of the emitter current which is not going to collector is the base current that means base current plus collector current must be equal to emitter current is that clear to you so whatever emitter emits some recombine rest go so this fact has to be understood because people always ask if it is 10 microsecond time taken is 0.1 microsecond why should they recombine at all okay all of them will go so the indistinguishability of electrons is the reason why at every lifetime they will hit okay. which ones i never say wo nikle hue nahi bola main okay bas yahi uska theory hai ye theory yadi aap transistor ke kahin bata sake hain jab puche to aap mujhe yaad kar liye okay till then tomorrow gain at 8:30 please remember this is most interesting part of bipolar transistor which i am teaching now okay we'll come back to this part again